Welcome to the Valley on ESPN as the Valparaiso Beacons play host to the Bradley Braves. The Valley on ESPN brought to you by IBEW, proud supporters of Alpo Athletics for renewable energy in your home or office, including electric vehicle chargers and solar powered solutions. Trust the electrical professionals of Powering America. And greetings from the Ark in Valparaiso alongside Jamie Stengel. I'm Todd Eichau. We go right to our players to watch, a presentation of Hungry Howie's. Jamie, how about Bradley? Yeah, Todd, the Braves are led by reigning Valley Newcomer of the Week, Terry Roberts. The junior guard leads the team in scoring and assists and is coming off an 18.7 assist performance on Saturday in a win versus Southern Illinois. And meanwhile, for Valpo, no player in this league hotter from the perimeter than Kevion Taylor. He's had 17 or more in four of the last six ball games. He averaged 19 and a half last week in two wins for Valpo. Let's take a look at our keys to the game. Their presentation of the Northwest Indiana Times. Proud supporters of Alpo Athletics. Jamie, how about Bradley? Yeah, the Braves have to dominate the glass. They lead the Valley in rebounding margin. Valpo is going to be without its best rebounder tonight, which will make it even more of a challenge. And then they need to hang on to the ball. Valpo leads the conference in steals. And last week against Southern Illinois, Bradley had just nine turnovers in a win. Yeah, I think Valpo's got to get those paint touches for Ben Cricky. No kith here today, so Cricky's got to be a big, big factor. And then be patient. Take the right shot. When the Beacons are patient, they usually end up with very good looks at the basket. There you get a good look at Thomas Kithier. Back injury, not in uniform today. Hopefully he can return on Sunday. Yeah, but as you mentioned, just a huge task now for Ben Cricky inside. Kobe King's going to need to contribute as well. All right, Cricky to jump it up, set to go against Leons. And that uh, tip never really got up into the air. Leons tipped it very quickly, and it'll be Valpo ball. Big matchup inside, Cricky and Mast. And here's the freshman point guard, Preston Reedinger, as we take a look at the Valpo starters. Starting line is brought to you by Allegis Credit Union, Northwest Indiana's choice for personal financial services since 1966. They say go Beacons, and they go right to Cricky. We expected this, a lot of Cricky today, and he's off the mark. Yeah, a little two-man game there with King and Cricky. That's nice action with those two bigs running that together. Here's Mass. Cricky, tough job, tough assignment on the red hot mass. They go right inside to him and it's easy for one of the hottest players in the lead, rink mass, 17 or more in the last five, and he gets the first two, and two nothing in favor of the Braves. Yeah, his 11 points per game are deceptive. He's at 18 points a game in conference play. Here's Cricky, gives up the dribble, out of Taylor. Taylor cut off, Kobe King from his, the free throw line, what a play by Roberts. Cricky has it, shot clock's down to five. They've got to hurry, Anderson's gonna have to create with a deep three, and that's off the mark. Well, you see Roberts, he can do everything. I think the season ended right now, he'd be a first team all-conference player. He gets a block shot here, he leads them in pretty much every category. And he's will be guarded by Preston Reedinger for much of this game, tough assignment for the freshman. Here's Roberts, and Cricky ends up with the loose ball, and Reedinger's got a breakout, and his dunk ties the game. So Reedinger got a poke away and a good kick ahead by Cricky, and we're all tied up. Yeah, and Valpo's guards are gonna have to pressure the ball a bit outside today just to combat Rink Mast inside. Here's Roberts. This is the freshman from Bloomington South, Potter Hickman. Kent gives it up to Leones. And now Mass, shot clock winding down. This is where Roberts will look to create, and he can't get it. Cricky altered that shot. And now Valpo looks for their first lead. Ahead to Reedinger. Roberts recovers. Now Cricky. Here's Anderson. He's cut off. Reedinger. I think they want to make Mass really work defensively by getting Cricky a lot of touches in the paint. Here's one of them. Mass holds his ground. Cricky with the right, and that's off the mark. Cricky's been well off on two attempts. But Kent nearly walked. Now Roberts, and they swarm him, and it goes right down to Mast. And he gets fouled, an early foul from Ben Cricky. So a rough start for the junior from Edmonton. Picks up a foul and has missed two shots. But I think one thing that's gonna happen, you can see it, 
Cricky's going to hedge out on Roberts, and Roberts is going to look to find Mass. Yeah, they've, they've done a really nice job of using Valpo's aggressiveness in guarding the ball screen against them. Valpo's going to have to get more ball pressure so that ball can't get inside so easily. Next one goes down, and Mass makes it 3-2. Riedinger to Taylor, now Crookie. Crookie waits, Taylor a shot fake, and a dribble drive, and he can't finish, and Valpo's missed a couple right out the rim. It really, that was a great move by Kevy on Taylor. Let the defense get past him, use some patience, just needs to finish. Well, Reidinger has caused two turnovers, and Kevy on Taylor's gonna go right to the basket, mass the block. There's Cricky, and this time he gets it to go. And how about Reidinger twice has caused turnovers by Roberts. And I think they'd like to see him make Roberts work really, really hard tonight. Here's Mast, hands it off to Hickman. Hickman's on the move, now Mast. Kent, ball swung. Roberts a shot fake, tough pull up. Nope, and reading her the rebound. A good start to this game for the freshman from Milwaukee. So Valpo the lead in the ball. Now Anderson, directing traffic. Taylor, they come out and screen and he fires a deep one and that's off the mark. Kent comes out with it, nearly dribbled it away. Hickman has it now. Now Roberts to Mast. Mast hands it off to Roberts. Back to Mast. The shot clock under 15. Hickman drives on Anderson. Couldn't finish, couldn't get the follow, and Anderson the loose ball. And Anderson's driving into the body. His pass deflected, but Cricky keeps it in Valpo's hands. Now reading her a deep three. That's in! Boy, what a start for Preston Reedinger. You can tell he's gained so much confidence as he's started to have some success in these Valley games. Starting with his performance at Loyola, I think that he's just, it's really bolstered his confidence. Mast on Cricky and a finish. And Cricky with an early foul. This is a very difficult assignment right now for Cricky. And Valpo would like to push him off the block a little bit so they can double Mast and try to make him give the ball up. Valpo's lead is two. And he throws it back out high to Reedinger. In the post, it's Taylor. Cricky loads up a three. That won't go. And Roberts ends up with that rebound. A little over five minutes in. Kent to the corner. Hickman's three. That's good. And a quick 5-0 spurt. And the Braves are in front now at 8-7. Yeah, Bradley is a team that wants to play with a lot of pace offensively. They'll try to push and transition as much as possible. Kobe King loses it going to the hoop. And we've got a break in the action. A little over five minutes in. We've gone back and forth. The Braves lead it 8-7. This is the Valley on ESPN. Oh, you're doing it wrong, man. What's wrong with action figures? Nothing, except buying them without Capital One shopping. What's that, Samuel, Mr. L. Jackson? Capital One shopping instantly searches for available coupon codes and automatically applies them. Just download it to your computer. Whoa, you're my hero. Yeah, I can tell. You like it? I look good in miniature. Capital One shopping is kind of genius. What's in your wallet? I don't say it like that, Devin. We're not getting destroyed out there. We need a plan. I have a plan. Right now, at T-Mobile, customers on Magenta Max can get the new iPhone 13, and T-Mobile will pay for it. I'm talking new customers. I'm talking existing customers like Ronald. The new iPhone on T-Mobile. Let's do it! Yeah! New and existing T-Mobile and Sprint customers can upgrade to the iPhone 13 on us on our most popular Max plan. Do we have a plan for the second half? Nah, no, we're going to get cream. But we'll be on T-Mobile. Papa John's just took their fresh, never frozen dough and hand stretched it into thin, oversized New York style slices. I mean, look at that crust. That is the perfect crust thickness no matter how you eat it. So you can fold it or not. 
But I ain't gonna lie though, I fold it. Get a New York style pizza from Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Eight seven the score. You can see Bradley holds the advantage over Valpo five four since the two teams join the league. They split last year. You can see Bradley won the second game handled after Valpo had won in overtime. That was the big ball game by Sheldon Edwards, who just checked in the game here. But Jamie, it always seems to be tight here in the valley. And here we are. It's early and it's it tight. It's eight seven. Yeah, you get a feeling that it's gonna be like this all evening. These two teams are sort of similar in how they want to play and in their personnel. So Bradley Ball, both teams have gone to the bench. Backup point guard Mikey Howell is in. Howell, a real assist guy. Five assists in three of his last four. Leones has it now. Diavero in for Valpo along with Sheldon Edwards. Ball goes to the corner and Hickman. Hickman cut off, shot clock down to five. Mass had it knocked free and stolen by Colby King. Really good defensive possession for Valpo there. They took Bradley out of the set they tried to run early, and then Val and then Bradley had nothing to do late in the shot clock. There's Cricky. Now to Taylor. Gives it up to Diavero. He's driving. Cricky starts to back his way in. Shot clock under 10 again. Good defense by the Braves. Shot clock at five. Cricky's gonna have to go. He wheels in and scores. Valpo now that's that efficiency that you talked about. Valpo waited to get best possible shot there, and it was a great move by Cricky. Here's Hickman. Howell down to Mass. Mass spins, lefty, no. Offensive rebound, Tom and I didn't, can't control it. And here comes Edwards back. 9-8 Valpo. Edwards to Diavero. They've got a size advantage here if Taylor can control it, and a great job by Howe, but it ends up in the hands of Taylor, who's driving. There's some contact before the shot. You see, there's, Valpo will try to get Taylor some touches inside if he can get matched up against a guard. And he was that time, but a good job by Howe to knock it away before Valpo get a good touch in the paint. Yeah, he's probably naturally a, a four, but a stretch four who can really shoot it from deep. That's a hard matchup for a guard. Rivero cut off. Here is Taylor. Ricky. Back out high. Shot clock's down to five. And that pass knocked away. And good job by Bradley. It's Hickman looking for a second three, and he's got it. So two threes for the freshman. Quickly back King, and he can't finish. Mass able to alter that one. Bradley by two, Tabaniner. Now we talked about how impressive Preston Reedinger has been, but Hickman is another true freshman guard who plays with a lot of confidence. They call him a glue guy for Bradley. That pass too high from Tabaniner. And Kirky's gonna get a breather here before the under 12 media timeout. Matt Lodick will, again, without Kithier, will try to be very creative in giving rest to Ben Kirky. Yeah, and keep in mind, they put in Joe Hedstrom, out came Back Rink up, Mask, so his task inside has been lightened a bit, although Ari Boya has been very good lately. Last two games, yeah. He's averaged seven points, four and a half rebounds. He'd almost been completely out of the rotation, and he's been productive the last two ball games. Here's Edwards. Edwards on the spin dribble. Tough shot, good! Tough shot maker. And he seems to like playing against the Braves. And Edwards has tied it up at 11. Good move there by Sheldon Edwards. Looked really smooth hitting that jumper. Here's Howell. They jump out on him. Roberts now with Edwards on him. Roberts yet to get going. Kent. A good ball movement there. And there's a guy you don't want to leave open. Tabanainen with the three. back Anderson, Valpo down three, Edwards tries to tie it up, and he does! It's unbelievable, he doesn't catch it clean, seems like he's a little out of range, and nothing but net for Sheldon Edwards. Action picking up, tied at 14 now. Here's Howell. 
lobbing for Boya, and a foul on Diavero. And that will take us to a break. So they trade threes first, Tabanainen, and then Sheldon Edwards. And we're tied up at 14 with 11.05 to go in the half. This is the Valley at ESPN. People assume these photo shoots are easy. Just like they assume they can't afford great insurance. But State Farm has rates that fit any budget. What? Can I get a profile? All in the core. For surprisingly great rates that fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Flip the switch, a light turns on. Press the button, machines and instruments come to life. Touch the screen, communicate with the world. Simple tasks, guaranteed results. Every second of every day. That's the power of power. And that's the power brought to you by the NECA contractors and electrical workers of Local 531. work hard to take care of your home. Save money and time on your next home improvement project. Apply for a low rate home equity loan or line of credit from Allegis Credit Union. Applying for a loan is easy with Allegis. Visit Allegis.org to apply online. Our team will move you through the application process so you can get to work on your project. Visit Allegis.org to learn more. Allegis Credit Union, working hard for Northwest Indiana since 1966. Well, this game carries a lot of importance in the standings. So important to finish in the top six in the league. And you can avoid playing on a Thursday when you get to Arch Madness as we take a look at those conference standings. Presentation of Holiday Inn Express. Proud supporters of Valpo Athletics. See, Loyola finally loses, and they lost at home. First time in three years in conference play. Missouri State got them. And Missouri State falls to Indiana State and the unpredictable Valley. And you can see both Valpo and Bradley trying to stay out of the bottom four. Bradley with that four and four record. They've won their last two. Valpo's won their last two as well. Boya gets a touch. Now the shot clock at 10 as Kent puts it on the deck. And there's Diavero with the loose ball. Valpo looks to break the tie down. Numbers aren't there. Diavero brings it back out high. And now Edwards scores five right off the bench. Edstrom. That pass loose, and Kent's got the steal. And he drives in on Anderson. Shot off the mark, and good job by Hedstrom, but then he loses it. And Hickman comes up with it. Well, Hedstrom did affect the shot and grab the rebound, but he's got to put it away. Hickman driving, and Hedstrom affected that one. And now Edwards gets the deflection and ends up in the hands of Roberts. Long offensive possession for the Braves. Uh, the shot clock reset, and I don't think it should have. Should have been about seven seconds when the ball got tipped over here by Sheldon Edwards, and for some reason a reset. Yeah, good eye there. They're going to take a look back at this. And it did get reset to 20, and then five more seconds went off from there. So KB Burdett at the scorer's table. Looks like it's at 11. It's at nine, seven, and that reset to 20. It didn't look like a shot ever hit the rim, did it? Maybe that, that second shot? If it did, it was the one that, that uh, Hedstrom altered a bit, and I couldn't get an a good look at it from there. But if not, we're looking at maybe, what, six seconds well, in the ball on the sideline? Well, I can tell you this. If it didn't reset, when it reset to 25 more seconds went off, the shot clock would be almost empty. Because you're going to look at this. Watch this. Does this shot hit the rim? It did hit the rim. It did. So definitely. it should have reset to 20 there, and it didn't right away. And now that they'll take about it. about right. Yeah, it was, it was delayed in resetting. Sure. So they give him 13, which is plenty of time. But good possession there defensively by Valpo. Lots of deflections, and, and you know, they really, really were disruptive. 
Mr. Roberts, now Diavero on him, and again, they jump the big out at him, and he gets it right down to Boya for the easy one. Great job by the guard there. If you can stretch that trap as far away as you can, it's hard for the defense to recover down to the post player. So Bradley by two. Here's Edwards. Now Taylor, yet to get on track here. That's from hands, Diavero trying to get downhill. Edwards, shot fake, and he starts to drive. Tough fadeaway shot from Sheldon Edwards, no good. Knew where the rebound was going. That, that ball hit the rim, and I don't know what's going on here. I mean, they should have put it back up to 20. We're getting some mistakes here on the shot clock. Yeah, and the ref just said, great. move it to 19, yeah. A great job by Sheldon Edwards. He knew where it was going and great saved hustle. it. That does allow Matt Waddick to get Ben Cricky back in the game. So I think we'll see that Hedstrom, maybe a three minute stretch in the first half as we just saw, maybe come up in the second half as well. Yeah, There's good. Taylor, but he can't get it. Good spell there by Joe Hedstrom too. If they can give just a few minutes of positive play from him inside, that's gonna be awesome for Valpo. Hickman on the move, forced it to go back outside. You can see Valpo does not want Roberts to beat him. They're hedging with that big right away and basically double teaming him. Boya, Roberts. Tough contested jumper is good. Deep one from Terry Roberts. He is a tough shot maker. And the lead to five for the Braves. Apple's gone two and a half minutes without a point. Tricky. Now you can see Taylor's got a guard on him, but they can't get him the ball. Edwards with a step back three. And he's got eight. And Sheldon Edwards giving Valpo a huge lift off the bench, he's cut it to two. Yeah, he's almost been bailout offense for Valpo. They can't really get anything going. He's hit some big contested shots. Kent, and now it's Roberts. Hickman in the corner. Kent, a deep one, and he rainbows that one in. Very good ball movement there by the Braves to find an open Kent. Not an easy shot, Ricky flying out with the high hand. Lead right now is six. They say that last Edwards basket was a two. We get a block at the rim, and here comes Roberts in the open court. Boya can't control it, but he saves it to Roberts. And Ken on the dribble drive. Off balance, got it to go, and Matt Lottick a timeout. Boy, five quick ones for Jason Kent, and Matt Lottick burns a timeout. And the Braves have the lead to eight. 7.40 to go in the half. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. It's amazing. He's talking about motorcycle insurance, and people love it. You deserve to save. I deserve to save. I mean, he has a way of making you feel seen. Bundle car and motorcycle insurance at geico.com. Are you kidding me? I'm getting sick of the industry. Oh, please. They stop, just want to kill me, but I won't let it. And I try to give them help, but they don't get it. So I tell myself when I step aside, this life will get you down, but I keep living. So I tell myself when I step aside, don't lose sight, baby, don't lose sight. Welcome to Sonic. May I take your order? Can I get two fatty milk? Melting the cheese. Order up. Sonic patty melt. We're not getting destroyed out there. We need a plan. I have a plan. Right now, at T-Mobile, customers on Magenta Max can get the new iPhone 13, and T-Mobile will pay for it. I'm talking new customers. I'm talking existing customers like Ronald. The new iPhone on T-Mobile. Let's do it! Yeah! New and existing T-Mobile and Sprint customers can upgrade to the iPhone 13 on us on our most popular Max plan. Do we have a plan for the second half? Nah, no, we're gonna get cream. But we'll be on T-Mobile.
A great start for the Braves offensively. They're five of five from beyond the arc. And they're shooting 56% from the field. And you see when they shoot well and they score, they usually win. Nine and one when scoring over 70. Nine and one when shooting over 44%. They're on pace for 80 right now. And again, shooting over 56%. Yeah, and to expand on that, when they shoot 50% or better, which right now they're shooting 56%, they've won 34 straight. So Valpo's got to find a way to contest shots better. Obi King back in the game, and they go right down to him. Backs his man down, leans in, strong finish. His first basket. Yeah, and maybe a matchup to look for for Valpo. Kobe King made that look relatively easy, and Valpo's had a hard time finding easy buckets. How about this lineup? Valpo's got King on Roberts now. And Kent just dribbled out of bounds. So here's a lineup where Trevor Anderson now runs the point. Valpo gets a little bigger with Diavero out of the game. Tricky. One dribble. And they really want to get King the ball. Taylor to Cricky, but it was knocked away, and here comes Hickman. Three on three. Leons, and finally a miss for three, but there's Mass. And he gets tied up. This will be Bradley's ball. The Braves, the top rebounding team in the league. And we've got a five rebound edge already. Fourth offensive rebound of the game for Bradley. Have a nine and back in the game. Howell also in the game. This will allow, when Howell comes in with Roberts, it'll allow Roberts to play the two. He's got it up top. Howell back to Roberts. Ricky on the help there. Roberts has to back it up. Mass has an advantage inside. They can't get on the ball, and the shot clock's down to five. Now they do, but King, great job getting around Mass to make the steal. Great job by Kobe King to free his body. He didn't let himself get sealed, and that's how he was able to get around. Anderson getting downhill. Ricky. Ricky's got a big size advantage there, but now they switch back. And that shot Edwards it didn't look like he really had control of the ball as he launched it, and thus it was off the mark. Tavaninen, cut off. Under six to go in the half. Reading her at the scorer's table for Valpo. Roberts trying to get downhill. Turned away. Masked a deep three. Uh, how about that? The Braves are now six of seven from three, and that's eight for Mast. Yeah, Mast, he's shooting 44% from three his last six games. He's a really good true post player back to the basket, but that pick and pop three is part of his game as well. Edwards got fouled on the move. The lead up to nine now, Roberts on that foul. Key stretch here, 5.23 to go in half. Edwards will get a breather. And Reidinger back in the game, played well in the stretch early on, the first five minutes. Taylor. Here's King, and he's got Howell on him. He'll try to back him down. He does, double team, throws it out to Reedinger. Shot clock winding down. Taylor looks up. He knows he's got to get one off. He, the shot clock at one, and it's a shot clock violation. Edwards looked up. He thought he had enough time to get Reedinger a shot, and he couldn't get it off, and a great defensive set from Brian Wardle's team. Yeah, and Valpo got Kobe King with the ball in the paint, and he drew a double team. They've got to be able to find somebody open out of that and generate offense. King the knockaway and the save, and Reidinger comes up with it. He gets it to Cricky, who goes inside and masks the foul. Good job by Kobe King again on the steal. And Valpo with five steals already, eight turnovers for Bradley. That's That's been one of our keys to look at, and that's kind of how Valpo's been able to stay in the game. Yeah, that's why it's close, because Bradley shooting lights out, six of seven from beyond the arc. Cricky knocks down the free throw, his fifth point. Twenty-seven, nineteen. 19 Valpo's been 
really phenomenal from the free throw line over the last month and a half. They're up, up over 75% as a team. Here's Howell. Howell giving some space. Now Mass, the shot fake. Dribble drive in on Cricky. It won't go. And it's going to be a foul on Bradley on the rebound. Tabanainen on the foul. Edwards coming in for Anderson. So quick breather for Sheldon Edwards. Trevor Anderson, a really good rebounding guard, and that was a big play by him. Bradley crashes the board so hard. They need that rebounding of guards, Valpo does, to help out. Reading her. Okay. Gets the back in. He's going to try to get to the middle. He does, but came up short. Cricky tipped it in, though. And that's eight for Cricky now. Valpo has cut it down to five as Cricky has scored the last four in this game. Great job by Cricky to stay active on the offensive glass and Valpo to find shots in the paint. That shot off the mark. Mass goes to save it. Can't do it under pressure from Cricky. Brian Wardle thought. Cricky was over the back, but not the call. And you see the great play by Cricky, which takes us into a break as Valpo has cut it down to five. They'll have it when we return with 3.52 to go in the half. 27-22 Braves. This is the Valley on ESPN. You see that? How you can see every delicious speck of sesame, garlic herb, and Parmesan? That is what flavored crust should look like. Crust so irresistible that if pizza could eat pizza, it would be this pizza. Can you imagine how good a pizza would have to be for it to eat itself? Talk about irresistible. Now get an irresistible meal deal for any budget starting at just $5.99. Hungry? Howdy! Since 1907, we've been one valley. Breaking down recruitment barriers, hiring coaches to lead our programs, and developing the country's next set of leaders. MVC student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit nvc-sports.com slash one valley. We all want to be part of something bigger, to go beyond the expected and discover something truly exceptional, to tap into the energy of a movement that moves society forward. Valpo is the place for those who strive for a better world. Here you can be part of something bigger without losing yourself in the crowd. And as you grow in every aspect of your life, personal, professional, and spiritual, you'll discover that making the world a better place isn't wishful thinking. It's what we do. Think of the world you want to live in. Then come to Valpo and build it. Stay tuned, halftime show right around the corner. It's a presentation of IBW, proud supporters of Apple Athletics. Renewable energy in your home or office, including electric vehicle chargers and solar powered solutions. Trust the electrical professionals of Powering America. Jimmy, not a great start for Ben Cricky, first two and a half minutes, a little bit of a struggle, picked up a foul, missed a couple shots, but boy, has he been good for Valpo since. Eight points, three rebounds, two assists. He's keeping this game close and he's got to play big minutes without Kithier today. Absolutely, and his three rebounds have all been offensive rebounds, so he is really helping keep possessions alive. You saw that highlight there. I think he was trying to just keep the ball alive, keep it up on the rim, ended up with the tip in. There's King, gives up the dribble. Boy, and the steal! And he wisely picks up the dribble. Seventh turnover for Valpo. Uncharacteristically high number for them. Powell with reading around him. Powell on the move, out high Hickman. Hickman coming down the lane, cut off. Now Leons, Leons to the basket. King knocked it away. Oh, and then a, a foul called on the second try. And they called it on Cricky. Toby King was saying it was on me. Let's take a look. Well, I'd say both look fairly clean. Yeah, and it's it's, Kobe King did a nice job as a teammate to try to get that because it hurts bad to give two on Cricky. You could spread the wealth a bit. Lyons is a 80% free throw shooter. And a lot of may go small here. It's be interesting to see. It's going to take, he is going to take Rick out of the game. How about this lineup? They worked with some with this lineup. First, we see of Aaron Gordon today. And so you're going to have Kevin on Taylor the five 
and a very perimeter-oriented Valpo team here with 3.15 to go in the half. Not wanting Cricky to pick up his third. Yeah, and Kevion Taylor, a big, strong guard forward. He's gonna have to guard 7-1 on the other end. Here's Taylor. They had Gordon back door, didn't see him. Reading her cut off. Under three to go in the half. Edwards got to create, tough shot, won't go. Not a great possession for Valpo. So seven point lead in the ball now for Bradley. This is Howell. And Leons. Taylor is guarding Boya, who comes out and sets the ball screen. Now they switch, Readinger's on him now. Howell starts to drive, shot clock under 10, Tavaninen to Howell, they go to Boya. Boya spins going down low and he scores. And Valpo missed an opportunity for Preston Reedinger and Kevion Taylor to be able to switch back there when the ball got away from the post. That's just too much of an ask for Preston Reedinger. Gordon driving, dribbles into traffic and turns it over. And back comes Tavanina and a chance for Bradley to grab a double digit lead. Leons to Hickman. Now out high to Howell. Out through a ball screen. And again, they got Boy a big size advantage. Instead, they take the deep three and a big rebound for Sheldon Edwards with 1.50 to go in the half. Edwards looks to drive. He nearly lost it. He did. And Tom and has got a run out. He's going to get a dunk. The lead is 11, and Matt Lodick is going to have to take another timeout. So Cricky comes out of the game, and it really unraveled for Valpo. And Boya making big plays. Yeah, Bradley in the midst of a 6-0 run here. Most of it, as you can see, points off of turnovers. Yeah, and Valpo really has been careless through the first 18 and a half minutes with the basketball, something they really haven't done much all year long. Yeah, and you know they're playing, they're kind of experimenting with lineups. They're a, a man down from their normal rotation. Darius Diavero is going to check into the game. They just need to take care of the basketball at this point. That's the key stretch. You got a minute 36 to go. Malai's gonna, gonna keep Cricky on the bench here. Knows he can ill afford for him to pick up a third foul under the circumstances. And hope this small lineup can get you through the final minute 36 and try to pick up some points. Hey, one go. Bradley showing a little bit of full court pressure here. Edwards to Diavero. 90 seconds to go in the half. Huge final 90 seconds here. Rivero trying to get downhill, cut off, throws it back out high, Anderson. Anderson backs down Kent, cut off. Now they want to let Kobe King create, but he's got nowhere to go, and shot clock winding down again. Can Anderson bail him out on a tough possession? Nope. A great defense from Bradley. Bradley's half-court defense is just suffocating. There's no driving lanes for players to create. And Rank Mask going downhill. And now it looks like Anderson is unable to get up. Boy, he's been bothered by that bad back. He got caught underneath and Mask ran him over. Trevor Anderson's been trying to gut it out here. Let's watch, we'll get a good look here. Tries to step in front. You can see him already reach for the back on the way down. Yeah, I think it must have been just the initial contact that really, and when you're playing through an injury, just the smallest tweak can really, really hurt. So again, unable to play in the second half against Indiana State, and now he's headed back to the locker room, and you're out without Thomas Kithier. When we talk about you know, Kithier's defense being missed, but how about his ability to just kind of run the offense through him? He's the sec he's got the second most assists on the team. He's he's a great passer. He's sort of a calming force, right? He's always that safety valve when he pops up to reverse the ball through on the offense. He's so heavily missed. Trey Woodyard will get some run here. We're down to 59 seconds to go in the half. And Mass hits the free throw. And the lead now is at 12, 7-0 run for the Braves as Valpo's turned it over three times during this stretch. You know, we've talked about, you know, praising these freshman guards from Valpo who have stepped up, but as Matt Lodick said in his press conference this week, they're young at the hardest position to be young at. So they've done so well, but you need experience there at that position. 
Where's Divero? Around the perimeter, Woodyard. King trying to get downhill. Here's the double team. Now to Diavero. Shot clock down to eight. Taylor, a shot fake, step over three. That's no good. And up will use so much time there that Bradley not can hold for the final shot. You're hoping to get the shot a little quicker, but just couldn't get a look. Yeah, that there's something to be said for Bradley's half court defense all season, but really today. Apple really in a cooker here. They're down by 13 with 24 seconds to go. You can see what happened last year. It's like we're almost headed to a similar score here if you double things up. Last year in the second game, it was similar to this, where Bradley just kept building and building and building, eventually won by 24. That was after Valpo had won against Bradley 11 days earlier in double overtime. And it's been a series that has, for the most part, been dominated by home teams. And Bradley's been very good this year at home. Not quite as good on the road. They, they sort of are starting to turn the tide a bit. You're right, in fact, Brian Wardle had lost here at the arc 10 straight times. Uh, six when he was with Green Bay and four in the first four matchups as a Bradley head coach. And now Brian Wardle, you said, yeah, starting to turn the table as they won the pre the uh, last meeting here had, at the Arc. Had to have been one of his least favorite players in the places in the country to play. For sure. So 15 point, a uh, 13 point lead with a chance to make it 15 before halftime as Bradley able to hold for the final shot. Mast, shot fake, Leons gets a dunk. And then the ball rolls away and they stop the clock. Matt Loddick wanted them to foul because they had fouls to give. And Valpo was unable to get the foul. And now Diavero will try to get something going before halftime. Edwards, a deep one, and that hits the rim. So Bradley ends the half on a big run after Valpo had cut it to five. The Braves score the last 10, in which Valpo had very poor offensive possessions. It's 37, 22 Braves at the half. This is the Valley on ESPN. If you're always asking, where next? Capital One has a new class of travel card for you. Introducing Venture X. Earn 10X miles on hotels and 5X miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges. Find your where next with Venture X. What's in your wallet? The BK $5 Your Way Meal is here to make your choice easy and so tasty. Go straight to the Double Whopper Junior with piping hot small fries, four-piece crispy nuggets, and a refreshing small drink. Can you believe you get all this for only five bucks? The $5 Your Way Meal, only at Burger King. A new home and new projects go hand in hand. With the Home Depot app, you'll pick it up in no time. You can pick up new skills in our Homeowner 101 workshops. Pick up new power tools with a tap. Pick up the things you need at our convenient lockers. Or even pick them up right from your doorstep. Pick up more of what you need so you can do more of what you love. The Home Depot app. How doers get more done. Let me tell you. You want to be successful? You got to hustle. You got to go the extra mile. Make a name for yourself. Have a firm grip. Always dress for success, and you gotta show them who's boss. Thanks for coming in. We'll get back to you. Hustle, sure, but for what matters. When you do, it leads to amazing. Welcome to the next level. The all-new Lexus NX. At Metro by T-Mobile, we're giving you more so you can rule the new year with the big 5G upgrade. More choices with the largest selection of free 5G phones like the Samsung Galaxy 5G. Plus, enjoy 5G access on every plan at no extra cost. All with the power of the T-Mobile 5G network. So whether you're discovering new ways to play or finding new ways to reconnect, Metro has what you need with more 5G and more free phones. Only at Metro. Where are those two? Awesome freedom! Hello, 
out, boys! Huh? Ice Age is back. Our bad. On Disney Plus. If we don't find them, I'm gonna kill them. It's a figure of speech. And ow. The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. Rated PG. Welcome back. Halftime report, a presentation of IBEW, proud supporters of Alpo Athletics, renewable energy in your home or office, including electric vehicle chargers and solar-powered solutions. Trust the electrical professionals of Powering America. Bradley by 15. Easy to see why it's been those uh, shooting numbers. They've gotten the better shots, Jamie, at the basket, and the numbers back it up. Yeah, and it's, you know, you look at those shooting numbers and think one team's not having a good shooting night. One team's getting a lot more difficult shots than the other. Bradley's half-court defense has been really good, and that, that's been a huge part of why those scoring numbers look the way they did. Yeah, and the nine Valpo turnovers, very uncharacteristic. So they haven't gotten good shots, and in the possessions where they haven't even gotten shots, there's been nine of them, and Bradley's taken advantage uh, getting out fast break and opportunities off Valpo turnovers. Valpo did get a, a good start to this game from Preston Riedinger. Got the dunk there, but really it was Bradley's offensive execution, which was very good. Mass getting a layup. They got layup dunks and open threes. Sheldon Edwards tried to keep Valpo in, and he scored seven quick ones in a stretch. But Bradley kept filling up from deep, six of nine in the first half. Tama Nainen with that three. And Valpo needs way more uh, points from Kobe King, just Two first half points in the first half. There you see it. The Braves closed the half on that Leon's dunk. And Bradley by 15 at the half. 37-22. More of our halftime show coming up when we come back. The Valley. You're always asking, where next? Capital One has a new class of travel card for you. Introducing Venture X. Earn 10X miles on hotels and 5X miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges. Find your where next with Venture X. What's in your wallet? Wake up with Wendy's and get a free drink with any breakfast sandwich. Hot coffee or Diet Coke, free. Frosty Chino, that's cool and free. If it comes in a Wendy's cup, it's free when you buy a breakfast sandwich. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's. A new home and new projects go hand in hand. With the Home Depot app, you'll pick it up in no time. You can pick up new skills in our Homeowner 101 workshops. Pick up new power tools with a tap. Pick up the things you need at our convenient lockers, or even pick them up right from your doorstep. Pick up more of what you need so you can do more of what you love. The Home Depot app, how doers get more done. What drove us to create the most rugged Honda vehicles yet? It's the courage to challenge convention. Rise to the challenge with the Honda Pilot and all new Passport Trail Sports. Son, it's time we had the talk. Uh, no doubt. T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places, so even here, I can use my new iPhone 13 Pro with 5G to share this video I made with your mom in cinematic oh. mode. What? Plus, with speeds as fast as Wi-Fi nationwide, I can upload this fast. I'm not sure you want to share that. Too late. Already hit send. T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places than anyone. Another reason T-Mobile is the leader in 5G. Are you kidding me? I'm getting sick of the industry. Oh, please. They stop trying to kill me, but I won't let it. And I try to give them hell, but they don't get it. So I tell myself when I sleep tonight, don't lose sight. Baby, don't lose sight. Cause life will get you down, but I keep living. So I tell myself when I sleep tonight, don't lose sight. Baby, don't lose sight. What's Thunderstruck on Carnival? What's Thunderstruck? <laughs> Thunderstruck is... Are you guys ready to get Thunderstruck? 
I am. Thunderstruck! You got Thunderstruck. See Bradley up by 15, 37-22. Valley here on ESPN. Don't forget Sports Center tonight, 11:30 Central Time on ESPN. We haven't seen a top 10 moment, but hey, we still have 20 minutes left to go. MVC student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change. For future Valley pioneers to learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit mvc-sports.com slash one Valley. Hey, we have breaking news. The Valley on ESPN local producer Corwin Leverage off tonight, and there's why. Him and his girlfriend Samantha welcoming Luca Leverage into the world today. Luca was born just a few hours ago at St. Mary's in Hobart, nine pounds, one and a half ounces. Mother, father, baby doing great. Big congratulations to Corwin and Samantha from everybody here at the Valley on ESPN. That is true breaking news. You can see just less than two hours ago. Meanwhile, I hope he's not watching this game. We congratulate <laughs> yeah. him. Well but done, it, Corwin. It seems like he would have something better going on <laughs> at this very moment. Bradley by 15 here at the half. We'll talk more when we come back about how can Valpo get back in this game, but a lot to make up. Down 15 to the Braves. More of our halftime show next. This is the Valley on ESPN. <laughs> If you're always asking, where next? Capital One has a new class of travel card for you. Introducing Venture X. Earn 10X miles on hotels and 5X miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges. Find your where next with Venture X. What's in your wallet? What's my safe flight story? I'm a photographer, and when I'm driving, I see inspiration right through my glass. So when my windshield cracked, it had to be fixed right. I scheduled with Safe Flight Auto Glass. Their experts replaced my windshield and recalibrated my car's advanced safety system. Safe Flight is the one I trust. They focus on safety, so I can focus on this view. Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace. At Metro by T-Mobile, we're giving you more so you can rule the new year with the big 5G upgrade. More choices with the largest selection of free 5G phones like the Samsung Galaxy 5G. Plus, enjoy 5G access on every plan at no extra cost. All with the power of the T-Mobile 5G network. So whether you're discovering new ways to play or finding new ways to reconnect, Metro has what you need with more 5G and more free phones. Only at Metro. CSX is on, on the move, on a mission to support America's economy and serve our communities. We're one team, a team where everybody contributes and every player counts. We're hiring with immediate openings for those who want to help run one of America's leading railroads, earn competitive benefits, paid training for conductors at nearly $25 per hour, and great advancement opportunities. Apply today at CSX.com slash careers. CSX, game on. A new home and new projects go hand in hand. With the Home Depot app, you'll pick it up in no time. You can pick up new skills in our Homeowner 101 workshops. Pick up new power tools with a tap. Pick up the things you need at our convenient lockers. Or even pick them up right from your doorstep. Pick up more of what you need so you can do more of what you love. The Home Depot app. How doers get more done. Saturday primetime, Nets Warriors on ABC, home of the NBA Finals.
as they look at Brian Wardle, what a job he has done with Bradley. They won five games his first year. And they've won two out of the last three uh, conference tournament championships. And you see Wordle versus Valpo. We touched on this. 10 and 11 lifetime. Uh, just five and seven at Green Bay. So trying to get to 11 and 11. Uh, struggled here at the Athletics Recreation Center. Had to play two conference tournament games here at the Arc. You can see hasn't lost to Valpo in Peoria. Uh, and did a good job for the most part in beating Valpo in Green Bay. But struggled here but he's trying to turn the corner now right yeah and it's i mean he's got his team in great shape 15 point lead there you get a look at valpo's head coach matt loddick see matt with 93 wins at valpo five over the 500 mark and only three valpo coaches you get a good look at this only three valpo coaches in the history have won 100 games as a valpo head coach and of course two of those with the name drew bryce and homer and J.M. Christensen going way back to the 1920s. But Matt Loddick, an opportunity to get seven more wins before the end of this year. Pick up his 100th victory. Gonna be tough now, Jamie. How does Valpo get back in the game? Yeah, well, first of all, they can't think about being down 15. They, they went the last four minutes of the first half without scoring, which is just a recipe for disaster. But they're gonna get Cricky back in the second half and they need him to play smart through two fouls. And they're going to need to be able to shore up the rebounding on one end. And they're going to need to keep getting touches inside. I don't think they're going to shoot their way out of this one. Uh, but I do think that they can get some points in the paint, uh, get Kobe King going there. Obviously, Cricky some touches. Kevion Taylor hasn't scored yet in right. the game. So he's going to have to get going as well. They're, 15 points is a lot, but they're definitely not out of it. Well, and it's a Valpo team under Matt Lodick that have come from these large deficits in the past. Kevion Taylor, by the way, 83 straight games with a three-point basket made. No threes in the first half. He'd been a hot player, averaged 19 and a half last week. Brian Wardle's done a really good job. And Bradley as a team has done a good job of not allowing Taylor really any good looks. Meanwhile, tip your cap to Terry Roberts. He hasn't forced things. He's only gotten off three shots but he has four rebounds, two assists. He made his only three-point attempt. Here's a guy who comes in averaging better than 16 points a game, fourth in the league in scoring, scores just three points, but found ways to affect the game. Doppel was doubling him out high, never panicked, never forced the shot, moved the ball, led to a lot of Bradley easy baskets. Yeah, I really like the way that he plays, and like you said, lets the game come to him. So Doppel will start the second half with the ball. And no Trevor Anderson went out with the back. Sheldon Edwards is a very shorthanded team right now for Valpo. Yeah, Valpo, you know, another thing we talked about, he's, they had nine first half turnovers. That number needs to significantly shrink this half because they can't give away possessions. Now they got to make up ground really in this first three or four minutes here in the second half. Ricky gets a touch out high. Now Riedinger. Edwards to Riedinger. Again, they got Taylor with the size advantage. They can't get on the ball. Now they do. Starts to back down. Cricky's gonna have to shoot a three, and that's no good. But Bradley fumbles it out of bounds and a big break for, for Valpo. So what's happening? The smaller player, Roberts, is guarding Taylor. They're gonna take the three-point shot away from Taylor and make him beat him inside. He hasn't been able to do so thus far. Yeah, and, and they've been trying. Valpo's been trying to get him looks in there, but Bradley does a nice job with ball pressure and it's hard to get the ball inside. Now Reidinger, there Taylor, he gets a look this time and he's short and Hickman comes running. Kent right under the basket, he's got to throw it back out high, now Mast. Ball worked very well, Leon's back again on Edwards, big size advantage there and he banks it in with the right hand. He scored the last two of the first half, first two of the second half. Lead up to 17 now. Back door cut beautifully, Cricky to King. And it ends a long Valpo drought. 12-0 run for Bradley, now ended. And let's see if that can get the Beacons going. They trail by 15. Five, 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 five. Five, five, five. Mast, good feed to Roberts, he went back door. Valpo's letting the ball get to where Bradley wants to get to. And in other words, they're able to run their sets without Valpo disrupting movement too much, and that's leading to easy buckets. Ricky, a touch baseline. 
Roberts, nice job covering up on Riedinger. He needs help. Fricky with the shot clock at seven. He's gonna have to go on Mast. He drives left, spins back right, beautiful move, but he can't finish. Good job by Mast, knowing Fricky's going left. Forced him back the opposite way. And Bradley's defense gonna make it really tough on Valpo to make up a lot of ground. Braves by 17. Now Mast, beautiful ball movement and a chance for a three point play. Right, Valpo's doubling Roberts, and as soon as he delivers the ball, it's going bang, bang, bang. The yeah. movement's phenomenal. Yeah, they need to, when they double the ball, they need to double with higher hands and make that first pass out of the trap a little bit more difficult because otherwise they're scrambling and there's no way to make up that ground. Missed free throw, but the lead is up to 19 now with under 18 minutes to go. Reedinger can't get downhill. Now he does. Hesitation move. Good finish. Great Preston move Riedinger. there. Yeah, absolutely. Great move, Preston Reedinger. That hesitation allowed Mass to get off of him and go back to the deep to the post player. Reedinger was able to win the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Five, 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 Pass a little loose, but Mass comes up with it. Out of Roberts. Again, there they double Roberts, and there's Mass. They miss him right at the rim. They back it out. Leon's for three. That's no good, and a good box out there from Kobe King. So Valpo finally gets a stop. Boy, that pass was loose. Kobe King goes to save it, but it ends up in the hands of Hickman. They got a two on one, and an easy one for Kent. Valpo's really been loose with the basketball all game long. Yeah, and, and more than we've seen all season, really, from this team. 10 turnovers, and most of them live ball turnovers resulting in baskets on the other end. Back up to a 19 point lead. Now Taylor trying to get off the snide, can't do it. Another long possession. Taylor bulls his way in this time and a good finish. And let's see if that gets Kevion Taylor going. His first points of the game come with 16 and a half minutes to go. And you've got to think that that matchup with Connor Hickman guarding him should go for Taylor. Now this is just not working. They keep doubling Taylor. They keep doubling Roberts, I should say. And Matt Lott has got to call a timeout. And every time they double Roberts, he's finding the open guy. And Rink Mass makes him pay that time. And this timeout will send us to a break with Bradley matching their largest lead, 47-28 Braves. This is the Valley on ESPN. It may not be music to your ears, but as long as it's music to theirs, bring the volume back to the venue with exclusive ticket access to unmissable events. One of the many reasons you're with Amex Platinum. So I'm going to, right? What drove us to create the most rugged Honda vehicles yet? It's the courage to challenge convention the will to succeed, and the joy of conquering the toughest trails. Rise to the challenge with the Honda Pilot and all new Passport Trail Sport. Son, it's time we had the talk. Uh, no doubt. T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places, so even here, I can use my new iPhone 13 Pro with 5G to share this video I made with your mom in cinematic oh. mode. What? Plus, with speeds as fast as Wi-Fi nationwide, I can upload this fast. I'm not sure you want to share that. Too late. Already hit send. T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places than anyone. Another reason T-Mobile is the leader in 5G. Juliana Pena looking to spin this MMA world on its axis. Celebrate. We're 
Finale on ESPN brought to you by Culver's, proud supporters of Valpo Athletics. Check out the official Valpo Instagram story for your scoop and score coupon. Paul Bradley right now, lead is at 19. And give, again, Roberts a lot of credit. They're doubling him. He's getting rid of the basketball. And eventually, it's breaking down the Valpo defense. Yeah, and, and Bradley has gotten a ton of good looks in the paint. Rink Mass, the beneficiary of many of them. He's got 12 points and four rebounds. But like you said, the double team is leading to offense right now for Bradley because they're handling it well. Edwards, now Taylor, and here's Cricky. What a beautiful move around Mass. We got the block, but a little bit of contact and two free throws coming up here for Cricky. I would say as long as he's in the game, I think that's gonna take us to a break, by the way. So Cricky will shoot the two free throws when we return. But the lead is 19 for the Braves with 16 to go. This is the Valley on ESPN. In thy light, we see light. Light has always been core to who we are at Valpo. Now, as we enter the next era for Valparaiso University, we are proud to say, we are Valpo, we are beacons. Beacons are signs of hope. Beacons lead the way for others. Beacons serve others around them. Beacons guide us through the darkness. We are beacons. 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 It's human nature to look forward to the little things, the big things, things that take your breath away. And to keep you moving forward, Northwest Health is here to be your health partner. We are 3,000 caregivers across 40 locations, helping you stay strong. And if life takes a turn for the worse, we'll be here to help you look forward again to living well now and more time with the ones you love. Northwest Health, look forward. Arch Madness. It's all about the excitement. The fans. The history. The big moments. Shoots at the horn. Good! Good! It's all about the madness. To make it to the tournament. And March, it, it begins, begins here. here. I'll see you in St. Louis. Visit archmadness.com for ticket information. What would you do with an extra $200? If you're a student between 16 and 24 in high school, college, or a trade school, you could earn free money when you open a checking account at Allegis Credit Union. Become an Allegis member, open up a Casasa cashback checking account, deposit $50 each month, and we'll deposit an additional $200 in your account. It's that easy. Visit Allegis.org Valpo to learn more. Allegis Credit Union, proud to support Valpo U Basketball. Valpo shooting only 37.5% in this game. That's uh, right on cue for this Bradley defense, one of only eight schools to hold their opponents to under 42% in each of the last five years. And here you can see the field goal percentage, 37.5 points. And Bradley, 96 blocks coming in, now up to 98 blocks on the season. They just make it difficult. And boy, Valpo's had a real tough time offensively. Bradley also clicking offensively here today as well. And that's a lopsided score. And they're getting both. good shots, Todd. They're shooting 58% from the floor, 60% from three as a unit. They're just getting good shots. Braves a 17 point lead. Kent to Mass. Now Kent, cut off. Leon's driving, cut off, got to back it up. Shot clock down under 10. Roberts, great pass to Mast, and a dunk, and it's Roberts again with the delivery, and Mast up to 14. So back up to a 19 point lead. You know, one of Valpo's principles on defense, they say guard your yard. They are not guarding their yard right now. Lee King does get an easy one. That means you have to be able to keep your person in front of you and guard one and a half maybe people. They need to at least guard one right now. That's a great point. Shots are coming easy. It's masked again. I mean, it's just so easy. Robert's getting rid of the basketball and it's breaking down Valpo badly. Bradley a 
again, matching that 19 point lead. Snapple's starting to get some points, but they're not getting stops. Ricky trying to back down Mass. Can't do it. Now Edwards will have to create with the shot clock to five. Deep three. No good, not a good possession there. Reading her good job on Roberts there. Now can Valpo get a transition hoop? Edwards, bad pass, and a Valpo turnover on a two on one. And now Leons is gonna get it done. That's just, a, just such a tough, frustrating turn of events. You force a steal, can't get anything on two on one, and it results in a dunk the other way. And those things are just sort of demoralizing as they add up. Taylor, tough take, and a good finish. Back down to 19, but we're under 14 minutes, and Valpo showing no signs of getting enough stops to get back in this game. Roberts getting downhill. And this time, a Bradley turnover. Both teams will go to the bench. You know, we talk about Roberts. If I told you, Valpo's got one of the best scorers in the league at five points into the second half. You'd think they were doing okay. But not the case right now for Valpo. Roberts held to five, but tactic, affecting the game many other ways. Arch Madness back, 2022 State Farm Men's MVC Basketball Tournament returning to St. Louis for the 32nd straight year. And you can join your team and Valpo and Bradley and Enjoy Arch Madness, you go to archmadness.com for ticket information. Kevion Taylor, again going to the hoop, and Brian Wardle in timeout, not happy. Doesn't want to see Valpo get any light, so Taylor twice gets to the rim. Again, struggling to make a perimeter shot, so what's he doing? He's starting to take it to the rim, he scored twice. Valpo has cut it down to 17. They've had field goals on five of their last six attempts. And you talked, Todd, about you know, having a smaller guard on him to take away his three-point shot, he's been exploiting that this half. And by the way, let's give you that phone number for the Valpo ticket office. If you want to join Valpo at Arch Madness, 219-464-5233. You can also go to valpoathletics.com. You can also go to the Arch Madness webpage for ticket information, one of the really great conference tournaments at Enterprise Center. So it's a 17 point game. A little bit of life here from Valpo. They finally got a stop, but both teams have scored five of their last six possessions. So you're not really making up much ground, but you do have it down to 17. Yeah, and, and you know, it's one of those things where you want to see how much time's left on the clock when you get this thing into single digits if you can. That's going to require, like you said, making some stops. You can't put together a run without getting a few defensive stops. So Aaron Gordon, Trey Woodyard, and Darius Diavero in the game right now. Matt Lodic having to give some guys a breather. No Kithier, no Trevor Anderson. They got through the second half against Indiana State, but that was a game in which they had a big lead and then held on. Much more difficult task now. Lobbing for Boya, well set up. And I was gonna say, now might be the time to go with Rink Mast on the bench for a little bit. Boy, a bad and pass then Moya comes in and... Sorry, Jane, bad pass by Diavero. Valpo gives it right back. But Boya has played well. Everybody's played well, really, for Bradley yeah. here today. Right. So Bradley Ball in a 19-point lead. They actually scored on the last six field goal attempts. Their only empty possession was a turnover. And Bradley now shooting 63% for the game. Leons backing in on Woodyard. He backs him all the way in. Good defense from Trey Woodyard. But Leons comes up with a loose ball. And the shot clock went off, but the ball hit the rim. So the possession continues. And the ball pinballed out of bounds off Valpo. Let's get a look at this. Does he hit the rim here? Yeah, it did. See, it hit the backboard. The underside of the rim kept the possession alive. And now Woodyard's gonna get whistled for a foul, just battling in there on Leons, who will get two free throws. Leons was a All-American, Juco All-American a year ago. Plenty of experience, 
on the Valpo freshman. Yeah, Lance is having a really nice game too. He's double digits in points to go along with five rebounds and a couple assists, and he's really playing like that experienced player that he is. He had a quiet first half. Got that dunk right before the buzzer. And he's added eight more points here in the second half. Make it nine. Bradley now seven of nine from the free throw line as a team. They match their largest lead with 12.25 to go. Foul as Taylor tried to get free. Foul is on Lance. And Wardle's done a good job retooling this team. When nearly losing it, Diavero. Taylor not free. And Valpo will keep it. Well, you look at Tavaninen back, Mass back from last year, but not that much else. Boya, they brought in a lot of players, both freshmen and JUCOs. Yeah, it's a little bit different than some of their counterparts across the country. They have the youngest starting five by average age in the Valley, actually. So newcomers, but not necessarily old Kevin, newcomers. Kevion Taylor still without a three, 0 for 5 from deep. Streak of 83 in a row in jeopardy here with under 12 to go. Tough take by Hickman. There's Boya. And finally, Cricky pulls it down. Rivera with the lane open to Taylor. And he gets fouled going to the hoop. And that will send us to a break with 11.38 to go, but it is all Bradley. Braves 57, Beacons 36. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. Woo! Papa John's just took that fresh, never frozen dough and hand stretched it into thin, oversized New York style slices. I mean, look at that crust. That is the perfect crust thickness no matter how you eat it. So you can fold it or not, but I ain't gonna lie though, I fold it. Get a New York style pizza from Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. With early paycheck, you can get your direct deposit up to two days earlier. That's another reason banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than this. Well, honey, which one are you gonna open up first? That one! Yep, even easier than that. Plus, with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Age is back. Our bad. On Disney Plus. If we don't find them, I'm gonna kill them. It's a figure of speech. And ow. The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. Rated PG. Let me tell you, you wanna be successful? You gotta hustle. You gotta go the extra mile. Make a name for yourself. Have a firm grip. Always dress for success, and you gotta show them who's boss. Thanks for coming in. We'll get back to you. Hustle, sure, but for what matters. When you do, it leads to amazing. Welcome to the next level. The all-new Lexus NX. Well, Bradley has really made it look easy offensively. Mass gets a couple dunks off Good penetration and good decisions by Roberts. There's a nice pass from Howell to Boya. Boy, Boya, last three games, he has been a real factor for Bradley. It's allowed Brian Wordle to give Mass some nice breathers. Yeah, and he's, he's one of those players who's really good at the rim. He's 7-1, obviously a dynamic athlete. And like you said, now he's up to 20 points in three games, and that's somebody you can kind of get good minutes from inside. Valpo's had a lot of long possessions. This one has Cricky going downhill and a good finish. Cricky up to 12. 
along with four rebounds, four assists. Leads Valpo in both those categories as well. Oh. Now turn back, and that time Cricky got back on Boyle. A bad pass here, can Boya track it down? Well, he threw it in an open spot, and it did not go in the backcourt. Possession stays alive. Wild shot, though, ends up in the hands of Cricky, and Boya's hurt. Well, he's up. If they stop the play, Craig Murley blew the whistle to get Boya looked at, and he is going to come out. But a good defensive possession from Valpo at 10.51 to go. See this great effort by Boya, though. Well, he turned his ankle a little bit. What happened there? Trying to get Woodyard free. Let's have a 9 and out of him. Got it to Fricky. And a good contact by Mass to prevent the layup. Again, Valpo's been fine offensively here in the second half. But they're not getting enough stops to get back in the game after they're down 15 at the break. Absolutely, and they're getting some good action there. Cricky rolling to the basket. The possession before Cricky being, bringing the big guy out and taking him off the dribble. All that's good stuff for Valpo if they can secure the ball on the other end. Uh, Cricky, such an outstanding free throw shooter. Misses there, and he was four for four. connect there. So the lead is at 18. 10.25 to go. Pin down. Coming through, Darius. Coming, Darius. There's Roberts. Almost fell out of bounds with Diavero there. Now they go to Mass. They double Mass. Howell trying to get downhill. Good recovery by Woodyard with the shot clock under 10. Time on nine in. Shot over Gordon, well contested there, and it goes out of bounds. And that was a good defensive possession from Valpo. Absolutely, and the way that Kevion Taylor doubled the ball screen was different than all the posts do. He came out and he flew with his hands up, so there was absolutely no passing angle out of the trap. He reached the midway point here in the second half, and Valpo down by 18. Gordon, trying to get it to Cricky, gets a touch, he faces up, finds Woodyard for three, he's got a beautiful looking shot. And a good job by Cricky getting rid of the ball as the double team was coming, he found the open man. There you get a little 6-0 run by Valpo to make it 15, and if they can get a couple more stops, you know, they're four of their last five field goals, so they've found something offensively. Roberts, getting downhill, pass deflected, but the ball reversed well. A deep one from Kent's off the mark, but there's Tavaninen fighting, and he saves it to Kent, who had it knocked free by Diavero, and Gordon comes up with the loose ball. By Diavero saving Valpo there. What looked like would be a layup. And Valpo with nine to go, trying to cut in a little further. Woodyard. The Cricky can't get it from 17. The Bradley, by the way, has missed their last eight shots. Another good look there by Ben Cricky. I'd like to see him keep taking Mast inside. Mast playing with three fouls, and Cricky has had some success on the block. Boy, tough pass from Diavero, and Cricky has it knocked out of bounds by Howell. Leon's coming back in the game along with Boya and Hickman. 8.28 left. Bradley had the lead up to 21. Valpo is down to 18, uh, down to 15 after that Woodyard three. Well, not a good pass from Diavero. And not a good inbounds play. I don't know that I saw Nobody anybody move on good. Valpo. Great point. All right, hard to fall him because there was nowhere to go with it. Roberts. Well, blocked by Cricky. Is that a jump? It is. Cricky prevents what would have been a dunk. Again, Roberts, another nice pass. 
Diavero, he gets his hands in on everything, yep. doesn't he? He's one of those pesky guards that always has his hands around the ball. So Hedstrom will come in here before that under eight media timeout. Bob, Bob, coming up, coming up. Boya, hands it off to Roberts, shot fake. He's coming downhill. Roberts fakes, shot clock winding down. That shot was short, and Boya unable to control it. So it's going to be a valuable ball when we return as uh, Valpo's getting a lot of stops right now. The Braves have lived, missed their last 10 shots. The Valpo not making up enough ground. They trail by 15. This is the Valley at ESPN. Assuming all NBA players want rings. It's like assuming State Farm doesn't have great rates. Why do we have coasters if nobody gonna use them? For surprisingly great rates to fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. You work hard to take care of your home. Save money and time on your next home improvement project. Apply for a low-rate home equity loan or line of credit from Allegis Credit Union. Applying for a loan is easy with Allegis. Visit Allegis.org to apply online. Our team will move you through the application process so you can get to work on your project. Visit Allegis.org to learn more. Allegis Credit Union, working hard for Northwest Indiana since 1966. You see that? How you can see every delicious speck of sesame, garlic herb, and Parmesan? That is what flavored crust should look like. Crust so irresistible that if pizza could eat pizza, it would be this pizza. Can you imagine how good a pizza would have to be for it to eat itself? Talk about irresistible. Now get an irresistible meal deal for any budget starting at just $5.99. Hungry? Howdy! Flip the switch, a light turns on. Press the button, machines and instruments come to life. Touch the screen, communicate with the world. Simple tasks, guaranteed results. Every second of every day. That's the power of power. And that's the power brought to you by the NECA contractors and electrical workers of Local 531. A trip to Arch Madness in St. Louis isn't complete without visiting the NBC's Fan Hangout. Arch Madness tipping off March 3rd, running through the 6th, and the NBC Fan Hangout at Ballpark Village, the best place to celebrate before and after games, featuring restaurants, entertainment, and all things Arch Madness. For more information, visit archmadness.com. Click on Fan Hangout. Hey, here's next year's Valley membership. You see UIC, the latest two, officially today, actually. Oh, well, we kind of knew about it a few days ago. But you can see they'll be a, a natural travel partner with Valpo. And reunited third conference, by the way, that Valpo and UIC will be together. Mid they can't get away from each other. Midcon, Horizon League, and now they'll be together in the Valley. Headstrom remains in the game for Valpo. They're down 15. Aaron Gordon, the tape. Missed the shot. The rebound to Boya. Bradley's gone ice cold offensively, but Valpo unable to make up enough ground to really get back in this game. Boya, Hickman, good look, and he drills it. A little miscommunication there. Darius Diavero thought they were going to switch, which ended up in nobody getting out on Connor Hickman. Headstrom, nope. Gordon, offensive rebound, he'll get two free throws. Headstrom's a guy who really can shoot the three. He was three of five coming in. And a great look. You've got the 7 1 boy out on him. And you remain patient. Hester might get a better look than that. But a good job by Aaron Gordon keeping it alive. And now he'll step into the line with two free throws. And that one's off the heel. Now, after making their first four free throws, have missed two of their last three. Gordon does connect on the second. 
And it's, it's just at that point of the game where you feel like everything has to be perfect. You have to get a stop every time, you have to score every time, make every free throw, and it just puts so much pressure on you. Roberts getting downhill, very easy that time for Terry Roberts. Just seven for Roberts, he's done everything else. He's gonna stay with Valpo with 6.44 to go. Barrow's pass deflected, now inbound under the hoop. Gordon cut off. Hedstrom not free, now Diavero. And he can by Leons, he can't do it, good defense there. Hedstrom a touch, shot clock winding down. Taylor a deep one, and still without a three is Kevion Taylor. 6.15 to go now. Roberts. See tough. Yeah, and after a quiet second yeah. half, four straight for Roberts when they need it. And you just get a sense that he is so good at just taking whatever comes to him in the game. Rivero got it to Hedstrom, and what a block by Roberts. Wow. Stop the ball. His second really impressive block of a taller offensive player today. Five rebounds, five assists, two blocks, nine points for Roberts. He affects the game in so many different ways. And Hickman went down, but he kept the ball in the fork, or in the uh, forecourt was Roberts. And the duck under in the finish. And now Roberts take it over the game by scoring. And Locke's gonna take a timeout here. You just get the sense, he, you can't find, he can't find the lineup that's getting him what he wants right now. And we know when you're two really key cogs to the puzzle, shy, it's hard to put together the right lineup. Now you go back earlier in the year, Valpo was getting minutes from DeAndre Young and then he hurt the thumb, and realized he couldn't come back from that. So you lost Really a key rotational guy who is really coming on as a freshman. And then since then now, Kithier missed two games earlier in COVID protocol. Uh, back injuries for Anderson. And now Kithier out again. You can see what Bradley has coming up. They're about to post their third straight win. And look at the schedule here. They've got Indiana State at home. Obviously they'll be favorite in that game. Be a tough one at UNI, but then they go to Evansville. Bradley a chance to really move up in the standings. Meanwhile, Valpo, I think their schedule was fairly favorable going forward, but you can't keep losing home games. About to lose their third home game this year. They do have two very winnable home games coming up, but a tough trip down to Carbondale against the Southern Illinois team that beat them here on the home court earlier. Yeah, and Southern Illinois, that's one of those teams that's really, really good at home and, and you know, sort of not as good on the road. So Valpo's gonna have to start, like you said, they're gonna have to come up with tough road wins like they had Saturday at Indiana State so they can stay into that middle of the pack region. 23 point lead, frustrating day for Matt Lonick. His team three of 16 from three. I think we knew going in that without Kithier, Cricky would have a lot of pressure on him. There'd be a lot of kickouts and some open shots from the perimeter. Bradley's done a great job of guarding the three-point stripe, not giving Valpo a lot of open shots. Right, and you know, when you're down by this many points and you don't have a lot of open three-point looks, it's hard to get back into the game shooting two-point field goals. Kevion Taylor over 41% from three coming in. Threes in 83 straight ball games. It's 0 for 7 from beyond the arc. Ready. Ready. Jamie, that's probably on his mind right now, you've got to think, right? And you don't want to force things, but you know about the streak. Oh, right, I mean, 83 games in, that streak is no secret. And I, I was just thinking, man, I really wish Valpo would win this game, but I don't want the streak to end either, kind of. Well, the NCAA record, I believe, is 93. So he's 10 shy. And I, I think it's probably on his mind right now. And that's tough to play with that going on as Kobe King finishes. A nice basket by Kobe King. Something we'd like to see him continue to do. He Sometimes when he scores, it looks like, man, he could do that every possession. 
does, and they need him to be more aggressive. Look at Roberts. A block from the backside by Woodyard, but gets whistles for a foul. Woodyard's getting some run here, and has looked fine out there. Maybe earning more minutes down the road. Well, and you have to wonder about Trevor Anderson. He missed a couple games at the back, came back. He had one really good game, then he struggled to get in the groove, struggled against Indiana State, this clearly was not 100%. Unable to come back in in the second half. Takes another fall here. How much are you going to get out of him down the stretch? And if that's the case, you're going to need another player to give you minutes. Yeah, it's just one of those things where you really need to win games in the next couple of weeks, so you want him to go. But he's just going to keep, you know, tweaking it if he gets bumped in game. So it's so hard to know when, you know, you need to rest and when you can push through. But... Yeah, like you said, they, they have to find another perimeter scorer if they can't count on Trevor Anderson. Good drive by Reedinger. Woodyard on the drive. Out high. Taylor backing up for three, and that won't go. Boy, and shots that really, you could say he's forcing it, but shots he's made on a regular basis throughout the season. Reedinger on the foul. We'll take us to timeout. Just 3.32 left. All Bradley today in Valpo. They lead 67-45. This is the Valley on ESPN. We pick up the phone because it's ringing. I should get this. Hello, this is Sam. How can I help you? That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. A new home and new projects go hand in hand. With the Home Depot app, you'll pick it up in no time. You can pick up new skills in our Homeowner 101 workshops. Pick up new power tools with a tap. Pick up the things you need at our convenient lockers. Or even pick them up right from your doorstep. Pick up more of what you need so you can do more of what you love. The Home Depot app. How doers get more done. Introducing Wendy's new hot and crispy fries. Preferred almost two to one over McDonald's. <laughs> Try them today, only at Wendy's. We're getting this story out there. We need a plan. I have a plan. Right now, at T-Mobile, customers on Magenta Max can get the new iPhone 13, and T-Mobile will pay for it. I'm talking new customers. I'm talking existing customers like Ronald. The new iPhone on T-Mobile. Let's do it! Yeah! New and existing T-Mobile and Sprint customers can upgrade to the iPhone 13 on us on our most popular Max plan. Do we have a plan for the second half? Nah, we're gonna get cream. But we'll be on T-Mobile. I think it's safe to say we can name our players of the game. Still with 3.32 to go in the ball game. Players of the game presentation of Lakeshore Bone and Joint. Proud supporters of Valpo Athletics. And no surprise here. Rank mass. Solid all game long inside. Ben Cricky's been Valpo's best player without question. You can see those assist numbers for Cricky. Valpo as a team has six assists. Cricky has five of them. And uh, go along with five rebounds. He's tried to keep Valpo in this game, but he... Short-handed beacons have really struggled. The boy Mast has really done of late so consistent. Six straight games of at least 17 for Rink Mast. Yeah, and you know, Wardle said this week when he was talking in his press conference, a slow start they brought up by Rink Mast. Said he's such a workhorse, such a smart player, should be a coach someday. And he was not concerned in the slightest, and he really knew that this kind of output as of late was coming. Well, a tough pass there. Crick into a triple team and a Valpo turnover. 14 turnovers tonight for a Valpo team, coming and averaging only about 11 a game. Mast, good feed. This time it was Mast to Roberts who couldn't finish, but he wins the battle for the rebound. And Hickman unable to connect. Kobe King back for Valpo, 2.40 to go. King driving, and he knocks one down at Kobe King in double figures. Been a tough go for him. 
And now in double figures, eight of his last nine ball games. Two and a half to go, but the lead is 20. It's been all Bradley tonight. You know, we said Connor Hickman, just the freshman from Bloomington South, kind of a glue guy. His plus minus today is plus 30. Wow. That is just how much he's able to affect the game. Really impressive for such a young kid who missed his senior season due to injury of Bloomington South. So, you know, an Indiana junior all-star as a junior yeah. misses his senior season, comes in and is a starter in the Valley. And quickly running down and the finish and a block here. Well, Hickman played on those great Bloomington South teams. J.R. Holmes, who's been there, I think, for about 40 years as head coach at Bloomington South. I hate to say, when I covered Bloomington South in the 80s, 1980s, <laughs> he was the head coach at that point. Ricky, a chance for a three-point play. So you covered him when you were five? Yeah, it's close enough. Let's end it right there. <laughs> Here we go. So 16 for Cricky. But under two to go, Brian Wardle says, let's run some clock. Double ball Roberts really been in control today. Not the big numbers, but again, affecting the game across the board. And even the shot he missed there that was sort of an easy one around the rim, he got the rebound, right? Good kick to the corner. Getting the rebound for Valpo. Edwards. And a 20 to go. King needs help. Got it to Cricky in deep, and he banks it in. Not really executing here late. Obviously too little too late. Cricky up to 18 now. Brian Wardle seen it up. Hey, there's a minute four to go. It's a 15 point game, and he doesn't like what he sees, and he calls a timeout. Listen, in this timeout, Todd, I need Valpo to draw something up for Kevion Taylor. I, I need to see an open three for him. Again, the streak is 83 games in a row. The NCAA record is 93. By the way, there's been some question on if Taylor would have some sort of record because he's crossing over Division II and Division I. It, it doesn't matter to me, of course. <laughs> See our upcoming broadcast by our local ESPN crew. Those two home games for the Valpo men's team. Obviously very winnable games to start off February. Evansville and Indiana State in town. The Valpo obviously set to drop to three and six in league play. And they're gonna need to run off some wins to avoid having to finish in the bottom four and play that extra game yeah, and they're in the conference to, tournament. They're gonna need to get healthy. You know, they're gonna have to take the next couple weeks and really get their bodies in in such a you know spot that they can finish off this home this stretch of conference games again Brian Wardle instructing his team let's just run off clock and get out of here Roberts great feed boy does he pass the ball well his, second in the league in assists his court vision is so good how about we try out a press this last some pressure 36 there. seconds or so. Tricky. It's King going to the hoop and he gets fouled with 26 seconds left. It does appear that Kevion Taylor's streak is going to go by the books. Good aggressiveness from King here in this second half. Been able to connect from the free throw line of Alpha 7 out of 10. Tough test again coming for Valpo down at Southern Illinois on Sunday. Now Matt Lennox says, hey, let's put pressure on Roberts here. And Valpo goes to double. And Roberts just going to go to the hoop and finish. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> well, Valpo's pressuring. I, I'm sure that's the thought, that they're yeah. pressuring. we got to avoid the pressure by going to the basket. And Valpo trying to score. They do get Kevion Taylor off a shot. And the streak continues. Oh, my gosh. Only because Robert shot on one end that did so Kevion Taylor get off a three. That was so that good. That was wild. 
what just happened. It, the whole last three possessions didn't make any sense, but that three was huge. So the streak goes to 84 straight games for Kevion Taylor, who hits one at the buzzer. It is a small silver lining at the end of this game for a Valpo team, which was thoroughly outplayed by a Bradley team tonight. Yeah, Bradley came out, and, and you know what? For a team that has been great at home, not as good on the road, they sure showed a lot of road dog to them tonight. Now Bradley has now won three in a row. They're up to five and four in league play. And I think coming in, we said right, the top four teams in the league were going to be UNI, Drake, Missouri State, and Loyola. I think Bradley's the team now, the way they are playing, that can break into that top four. Yeah, and you got it. That's exactly right. And, and it's the team that really starts to get hot at the right time. And that certainly is Bradley right now, carried by a really, really good point guard who we saw today in Roberts. Yeah, really impressed by Roberts with uh, six assists and five rebounds. Today. That's going to do it. For Jamie Stengel, Todd Iko saying so long from Valparaiso. Final score for final time. The Bradley Braves, 71. And the Valpo Beacons, 56. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. Thanks for watching today's contest. This has been a presentation of ESPN.